Unless you've been living under a rock for the last decade, you're probably well acquainted with teen heartthrob, high school musical alum, and Baywatch babe, Zac Efron. We're literally the same age, but for some reason, I still think of him as like a teenager. So yeah, he's not really my vibe, but there's no denying that the kid is talented and attractive as and most recently, the triple threat graced the cover of Men's Health magazine, where he spilled the tea on everything he eats in a day and his extreme movie prep diet. Keyword being extreme. One to 10, one being not so extreme and 10 being extremely extreme. I give this a 9.5. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at everything that Zac Efron eats in a day. Please take a minute here to pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning as we will be discussing pretty restrictive diets. So please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Let me hop in here really quick to tell you about my sponsor for today, Love and Pies. So at the end of a very busy day, I just love to zone out on my phone and Love and Pies has become my new favorite game. It is a free to download online game for tablet or mobile that lets you build your dream cafe. I kind of have a secret fantasy of me retiring and owning like a little bake shop in a country town somewhere remote. So this kind of helps me live out that dream without any kind of real life commitment. Love and Pies follows a single mom character, Amelia Green, who works to restore her cafe while uncovering a bunch of dark family secrets and mysteries. The game is very much multifaceted. So you've got character development, competitions, and you get to use your creativity to customize and decorate your dream bakery. It's a feel good game that feels like the perfect little escape. My favorite part of course is the decorating. I mean, there's just something so comforting and nostalgic about dreaming up a place to buy cinnamon buns and pies. So if you want a little escape from your hectic life, check out the link in my description and download Love and Pies today. All right, lovelies, let's get into it. I guess the philosophy around my current diet is intermittent fasting mixed with getting enough nutrition to sort of sustain me throughout the day. Okay, so intermittent fasting doesn't necessarily need to result in weight loss since it doesn't explicitly restrict the calories you can eat in a day. But as I discuss in my video on intermittent fasting right here, the main reason why it often does result in weight loss is simply because we suck at making up for lost calories when when we skip one or more meals. That said, it's often not recommended for folks who need to ensure they're getting a lot of nutrition in the day to support very active lifestyles because it naturally limits our eating opportunities. But of course, different strokes for different folks. And if it works for Zach and he feels that he isn't deprived or depleted at the end of the day, then ultimately, it works for me. I started intermittent fasting just after I stopped being vegan. My body wasn't processing the, the vegetables in the right way. So first of all, this language might be pretty confusing for a lot of people watching. Being vegan doesn't cause you to not process foods the right way. Likely what he means is that the plant-based diet was maybe hard on his digestion. But as I discuss in my video right here, this is likely because plant-based diets are typically one, very high in fiber, and two, pretty high in FODMAPs. Now, while fiber is obviously important for regularity and other health benefits, adding too much fiber too quickly can cause a lot of potential bloating, constipation, and gas. Now, while these symptoms usually subside as your body adapts, it is recommended that folks who aren't used to eating so much fiber do so gradually while also drinking enough water to support regularity. Eating more plant-based foods also translates to eating more fermentable carbs called FODMAPs, which can be difficult to tolerate for some folks. This is highly individualized, so it is most likely the case that a few veggies in excess amounts just like didn't vibe with Zach's digestion, not all veggies across the board. Regardless, I am all about finding a pattern of eating that works for you, and if following a vegan no longer served Zach, then I think this 100% makes sense. 
And please guys, be kind in the comments and be sensitive to everyone's unique journey. For most roles, you, you change something. But I think probably the one role that I had to change the most for was probably Baywatch. That movie I adopted a really, really specific eating regimen. Clean fish or meat with sweet potatoes. Like that. And I just did that the entire film. I mean, I don't want to yuck someone's yum here, but the thought of living off strictly meat, fish, and sweet potatoes every day sounds like straight up torture. Also, what exactly is clean meat? Like cooked without fat, unseasoned, bathed in soapy bath water before eating? Like, I guess we'll never know. But what we do know is that attributing the word clean to food is just another example of diet culture moralizing food. As for eating the same thing every day, I have a whole video discussing the implications of this, but in short, when we eat the same thing every day, we limit our food variety to just a handful of foods, which can negatively impact our nutrition status, microbiome diversity, and digestion. It also goes without saying that eating the same thing every day gets boring real and fast, making it difficult to derive any pleasure and satisfaction from our meal. And we actually have some research to suggest that we absorb less nutrition from foods we don't enjoy. But I also think that this diet monotony tends to be a bit of a tactic in dieting circles because it's very hard to overeat foods that you find really boring. Basically, this diet looks a lot like a typical bodybuilder's prep. High protein, low fat, low carb, moderate fiber, and low FODMAP. It technically gives preference to fuel for building muscle, so mainly protein and hopefully enough carbs while still maintaining a calorie deficit. Sweet potatoes are also lower in FODMAPs in moderate amounts, so because this diet also doesn't include other fruits and veg, it's likely a low bloat diet. Ideal, I guess, if you need your abs to be visible at every angle in every shot. So that was that was the most extreme I had ever gone. I think I was in ketosis the, that entire film. I would definitely have to agree that eating the same meals three times a day is certainly extreme and also highly unnecessary. Often we see folks on these bodybuilding type preps find a few foods that work and they feel too nervous to change it up out of fear that it will somehow throw everything off. But if ketosis was his goal, he would likely need to limit himself to no more than two medium sweet potatoes a day and then just fill the rest of his calorie needs with a sh ton of meat. And Zach is actually the first to admit that surviving off of potatoes and meat to maintain his physique is unrealistic and miserable as he shared with Men's Health that obtaining his Baywatch body was not something he would ever do again or recommend to anyone else. Not only was he overtraining and eating the same three meals a day, but he also had to take powerful diuretics to achieve his chiseled Baywatch look. And this is actually a common practice by pro bodybuilders and fitness competitors because the diuretics help to flush out any water retention to make the muscles look more defined. However, use of diuretics to achieve a dry physique is highly controversial, as not only can it increase the risk of dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and muscle cramping, but in worst cases, it can even be fatal. In fact, pro bodybuilders Mohamed Benziza and Andreas Munzer both died of health complications from the use of diuretics. Another pro bodybuilder, Paul Dillette, collapsed on stage from extreme dehydration and electrolyte imbalance as a result of abusing diuretics. And even though he survived, he recently shared that his heart actually stopped beating and he was officially pronounced medically dead. So yeah, use of diuretics is not to be taken lightly whatsoever. On top of that, Zach also said that the process of achieving his Baywatch look caused him to develop intense insomnia and long-term depression. So while I applaud Zach for being very candid about his difficult experience and calling out the harmful consequences of this process, it doesn't look like it's held him back from doing it again, as he was recently forced to bulk up for his new film, The Iron Claw. So I think it just goes to show that much like women, men in Hollywood are not immune to the pressures to meet a body ideal at any cost. Toughest diet I've ever done for a role. Probably just not eating. I've done that a couple times. Oh my gosh, like just when we thought things couldn't get worse, folks, 
This is not a diet. This is straight up starvation and an extremely harmful message to put out to an audience of men who likely aspire to obtain Zach's physique. It's especially harmful when this behavior is glorified by titling the cover story in the media, Zac Efron, the hustle, the muscle. Folks, restricting food options to only three foods is not a hustle. Abusing diuretics is not a hustle. And starving yourself is most certainly not a hustle. There's absolutely nothing admirable about this. This is dangerous and potentially life-threatening behavior. Like, why is the media glamorizing this? This reminds me of that super cringy clip of Megan Fox when the women on The View were like petting her and praising her for never eating anything fun. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have cheat days. I don't, I don't eat anything yeah. fun. Like, we know this messes up a lot of women, but it also messes up a lot of men too. And Zach is a perfect example of that. Let's not forget that following his days on Baywatch, he was quickly called out for his alleged dad bod, despite still maintaining a muscular slim physique. Like, what the actual And this yo-yo cycle is seemingly never ending for a typecasted celebrity like Zach. Zach himself has even said, It's not the time or the place to put pressure on yourself, unless you really need to be shirtless that entire film which tends to be the case for me sometimes. And this ultimately puts that much more pressure on Zach to go to extreme lengths to live up to this image and maintain his brand. So much so that it allegedly impacts his physical and emotional well-being. And while the majority of research in eating disorders looks at women and their pursuit of thinness, we also know that the pursuit of muscular ideal in men can increase the risk of muscularity-oriented disordered eating, aka mode, and muscle dysmorphia. And I am by no means diagnosing Zach with an eating disorder. I mean, I also get that a lot of actors just see this as part of their job. But I just want to flag that a lot of these behaviors and practices that he engages in during his movie prep diet align with diagnostic criteria for these disorders. And that these behaviors are encouraged, recommended, and glamorized by the industry. So to Zach, these may just be temporary behaviors for the sake of a movie role. It's like part of the job that he may or may not be able to distance himself from after filming. But to someone else watching, these behaviors may serve as disordered eating inspiration. And that's a problem. With that said, let's take a look at what Zach actually eats in a day, allegedly, when he's not preparing for a movie role. So typically I'll break fast around 10, 30 or 11. Um, but that's after I do some cardio. So regardless if you are intermittent fasting or not, some folks might prefer to do a fasted workout because they either don't have the time to prepare, eat and digest breakfast in the morning, or maybe they just don't like the feeling of having a lot of food in their stomach during a heavy workout. But proponents of intermittent fasting often suggest that a fasted workout helps to burn body fat because being in a fasted state uses up fat stores for energy. And yes, it is true that while fasted cardio may help to burn fat, it doesn't necessarily equate to weight loss. Research actually shows that there is no difference in weight loss between fasted and non-fasted exercisers. Even though we see an increase in fat oxidation during fasted exercise, it doesn't actually burn any more calories than had you done that exercise later on in the day after a few meals, nor do we see an increase in calorie burn over the course of the day. Weight loss ultimately comes down to a calorie deficit, not fat burning. So exercise during a time of the day that feels convenient and supportive for you. First meal of the day. Usually starts with bone broth. I really love bone broth. It's satisfying and it's good for your stomach. So bone broth is one of the few celeb endorsed wellness foods that might actually live up to some of the hype. For one, it is nutrient rich and loaded with collagen protein and micronutrients like calcium, iron, magnesium, and potassium. And two, we also have some in vitro animal research suggesting that it may help to improve our gut health. But it's worth noting that bone broth is pretty low in calories, so two cups provides less than 100 calories. So while it may be satisfying and provide a healthy dose of protein, we would definitely want to follow this up with some actual substantial fuel. Some sort of veggies with a really clean source of protein, whether it's chicken, beef, venison, elk. Okay, so I hate the clean verbiage, but I do love that we are prioritizing some veg here. And at least we're getting more diversity here with the protein options versus just meat and fish on the Baywatch diet. Still waiting on some carbs and fat in this day because so far it's just basically straight up protein. Then yeah, I usually have my highest carbohydrate meal sort of in the evening. That's usually another 
another really good source of meat and healthy carbohydrate like sweet potatoes or quinoa. So I am curious to know why Zach would prioritize his carbs in the evening and not earlier on in the day or like closer to his workout. Um, even if Zach is intentionally going low carb, which by the sounds of it, I would assume that he is, it would actually be metabolically more beneficial for him to get his carb fix earlier on in the day as that is when our bodies are more insulin sensitive. In other words, when we're more insulin sensitive, our body is more efficient at absorbing glucose from carbs and using it for energy. As for the meal itself, I am glad that Zach has an option other than just sweet potatoes, even though quinoa is admittedly also boring as f Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, on cheat days, I love to eat massive amounts of pancakes. So if I'm doing pancake day, it's, it's a lot of pancakes. I'll go through a whole box of Kodiak cakes. If I'm gonna have a cheat meal, I still want it to be at least semi-good for you. I think we need to redefine good for you because if this means eating a whole box of pancakes just because it has protein in it, then it also means eating over 2000 calories and 175% of our daily sodium recommendation in one sitting. In just basic protein pancakes. And eating a whole box of pancake mix because it's got protein in it is also kind of redundant for muscle building because even though the total provides over 145 grams of protein, only around 13 to 20% of this can actually be utilized for muscle protein synthesis. This also means that the two meals a day that Zach had while intermittent fasting also may limit muscle protein synthesis, which is why intermittent fasting is generally not recommended for building muscle. I also think if Zach has to eat a whole box of pancake mix on his cheat day, that this is a clear indication that he is one, not eating enough during the week, and two, depriving himself so vigorously of the foods that he actually enjoys. Like, I don't see why these protein pancakes couldn't be incorporated into his prep every day. Honestly, folks, something is not right here. And it's pretty apparent that diet culture has left its mark on Zach. We have all the usual suspects like cheat meals, moralizing language, extreme restriction, over-exercise, and even more concerning behaviors like overt starvation and abusing diuretics, all at the expense of his mental and physical health. And it's clear that he knows this himself. And even though he says it, and even though we can all acknowledge that yes, he's doing this for a role, I still know that people will see his body and believe that it's worth the risk them trying it themselves. But I cannot emphasize enough how dangerous these regimens are and they most certainly should not be a representation of men's health. And it just goes to show that regardless of sex or gender, health is still largely defined by how we look and our body size, regardless of the obnoxiously risky behaviors that it takes to get there. There's really no winning in the world of diet culture, no matter who you are. Wow, winning. And I just hope for Zach's sake that he doesn't have to learn this lesson twice. But on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below on who or what you'd like to see me review next, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.